And I would like to thank my first mate supporters, Andre Cruz. As a member of Diecast International Builders, I approve this video. This is Don the Diecast Pirate, and today we have another build for the Diecast Mafia. Great group of guys. They all invited me into the community uh, with open arms when I first started with this, and I'm good friends with all of them. And this month is shop trucks, and they say put your your channel logo on there. I don't really have one yet, and I don't have decals made for that. But what I do have in mind for this, and we'll get it out of the package and take a look at it, is back in 1975, my dad bought a 1972. F-250 and it wasn't four-wheel drive like this one is uh, originally I was going to take let me get it out here I was gonna take this truck and restore it into that one but it, this is a short bed this truck is a long bed and so and I do have the correct wheels and pretty much for the most part this is going to be a color change wheel swap uh, but we're going to turn it in, and I also have to do some custom fabrication uh, for something that goes on it. But we'll get to that once we get into it. Let me get it out of this package, and we'll get it up on the turntable and take a look at it. So here we go. It's an M2 1972 F250 4x4 high boy. Now, the truck that my dad had was a two-wheel drive, but it was this exact truck it was an F-250 um, and I remember that truck very well and I do have some nice stories to tell about that truck along the way so I'll get to those later in this video but uh, let's get this thing taken apart and see what we're dealing with alright so there's a lot to this M2 truck and I think I got it all separated um, I don't want to dump it out because of the screws. Um, and there is a detail that I want to leave intact. And we'll talk about that after we get all these pieces out so you can see what's going on. Now... There's three pieces that go under the hood, and we'll talk about those two. Uh, so the base, for the most part, I'm not going to touch it. I may just go over it with a black primer and then detail it, even though you know, it has the four-wheel drive stuff on there. We may just go ahead and detail that stuff out. Anyway, I'm not going to try to remove it. As far as what this goes, it's a representation of what my dad had, not an actual, uh, I to say, it's not an actual copy. I'm going to make a tribute to what he had. Um, and this is better than that short bed truck that I was going to use. Um, because the other one's a green light, and green lights are even harder. So, under the hood, we have what looks to be some kind of control box that goes back there um, we have the battery okay and we'll cut off there's a little bit of flash on there we'll, we'll cut off and we'll detail that battery a little bit uh, give us some detail the wash looks, looks, looks like the windshield washer reservoir that was in there um, and then we have the engine. And the engine I'm not going to do anything with. Uh, actually, I might. It looks like there was some blue paint that didn't get sprayed right. Like maybe they were... Hmm. And the radiator separate. So I may separate that and just 
paint the engine. Uh, because, I mean, it's not like we're going to open the hood and see that, but I'll know it's there. So, um, so the hood and the logos, after I drop things. Uh, so, the hood itself has the the Ford emblems, the, the letters on it. We're not going to try to reproduce those, and we're not going to try to reproduce the Ford and the those lenses on the side there those are just reflective lenses we're gonna let that go and so we'll strip down the cab and the hood the doors won't get stripped down because the wing windows or the wing windows yes the wing windows are plastic and they're attached to the doors and I don't want to separate them and reattach them so what I will do is cover those with liquid mask on the inside and outside and then we'll just uh, paint the doors the way they are um, and then the bed the detail that I don't want to lose is on the tailgate the the Ford symbol there so again I'll put liquid mask just over that part and then we'll primer and paint the bed I believe well, we'll take a look at that. Um, I have pictures on my computer of the paint scheme that this truck had. Uh, and I'm going to go off of those. And it was red and white. So, I think the top of the cab was red like this. And then there was white. And then in the middle was the red stripe that went all the way down. And then the bottom part was white. Or maybe it was white on top and, and red on the bottom, where this one's black. One thing that this truck has that his didn't have is this toolbox on the side. Maybe it did. I don't remember. It may have. Um, but I don't remember because I never remember him opening that. And he didn't have it very long. He got the truck in 75. Or maybe it was later. Maybe it wasn't 75. Maybe it was 78. The paint on the truck was rough, right? It had been a work truck. And I remember him and his buddies coming over and they took the bed off. And they took the... I think they set the bed outside, brought the truck in and painted the cab. And then took that out and brought the bed in and painted that. And then put it back together and also remember that it didn't have a rear bumper on it and he got an old Chevy truck that was junk and took the bumper off of and, and put on it I think the interior was red and white as well but my memory's foggy on that so maybe we'll just leave well maybe we'll just leave that black since my memory's bad on that part of it and just focus on changing the body parts to the colors that they need to be we're not going to strip the base. We'll strip the hood and the cab. Basically, that's it. We'll strip the hood and the cab and uh, put them in the awesome sauce with the other cars I'm getting ready to do right now. Okay. Okay, so we're going to put some uh, Vallejo cold white on this and hopefully it's going to go over these parts that I didn't strip okay. But I guess we'll find out, and there's only one way to do that.
Okay, so in the original truck, the bottom part from this body line down was red. So I'm gonna mask off everything above that. And I already peeled off the liquid mask from the logo in the back. Now originally this truck did not have the chrome trim around, it just had the letters in the Ford name pushed out and since the truck was red and white the the letters were red and because that's a flat surface there's no way that I could reproduce that on here and I'm not going to make a decal for it we're just going to leave this the way it is and call it good enough Okay, so I got some of this tomato red from the Redline shop made for 70s and 80s Hot Wheels cars and we're going to put it on the bottom end of this truck and hopefully it goes okay. I've never actually sprayed this color before and I've never sprayed the Redline shop enamels over a water based. I, the thing of it is, is I know like it might be okay. This might be water based. I don't know. I know the Spectra Flame paints have to be cleaned up with uh, like an acetone or an alcohol, something along those lines. I don't remember. It says mix six parts paint to one part hardener, so this is a little different. Yeah, clean with lacquer thinner. So. I was almost considering putting some Vallejo metal, metal medium in to give it some sparkle, but it's a that's a water-based product, and this is not water-based. So you can run into issues spraying different types of products over. I know um, some people have had problems spraying uh, like a oil-based clear over a water-based finish. Um, hopefully we don't run into any issues with that. I'm just gonna take it real slow and uh, let it get a good bite and we'll just see how it goes. Hopefully it'll be okay, we'll find out.
All right, so this is what we ended up with. I just got these back out of the air fryer. Um, a little parts with the red on them. Overall, I'm pleased as long as I don't stretch the paint. <laughs> I am pleased with the outcome on this. There's a little bit of a some paint that got up in there red that you won't see once it's assembled. Um, a little bit of overspray got up in there. I'm not too concerned with that. Um, what else? The doors look great, I think. I need to pull the liquid mask off of it. Like I said, I just got these out of the air fryer, so the, these are still warm. So this is the green light wheel and tire pack series one, and it's Ford wheels. Now, as I mentioned previously, this truck was not a four-wheel drive. And it did have these hubcaps. But these here look like they're for an F-150. And they weren't white walls, I think. No, those are about the same size. That's not that, so I wonder if I can swap No, it won't work The insides of these are bigger Now, that being said it didn't have white walls on it either. So I'm going to have to flip these around without flinging them around. So I'm going to work on this off camera and come back for the reveal. Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly present to you the F-250 that my dad owned back in the late 70s, early 80s. Get it up on the turntable and take a look at it. So remember we had the blowout with the paint, the red, and once I got the truck together with the door on it and the door was taped perfectly, um, I had to go back in with a brush with the white paint and go over it. I detailed in the taillights, the tailgate handle, the door handles, the gas cap. When we come back and finish the sideboards, uh, I'll chrome in the grill then, uh, touch up the bumpers, the push bars on the front bumpers with the, uh, the black sharpie. I don't remember his truck having those, so I may end up taking those off right now. That bumper is not glued in and the grill is not glued in. I just stuck them on. Uh, so, all in all, I mean, I have not seen this truck for a very, very long time. It looks like there was still a little bit of red overspray inside the door. Uh, so I'll probably have to touch that up as well. I would open the hood and show you underneath it, but it springs closed and I don't want to force it right now. Uh, because this vehicle is put together with screws, I can take it back apart. However, the things under the hood that are glued in will stay in. I did not glue in the engine, but I popped it back in place. It's not going to go anywhere, but the other pieces did get super glued back in. We used to go cut wood every other weekend when I went to my dad's, and this truck had the sideboards up on it that went all the way up. They were just above, they're actually higher than the, the cab. And I'm going to try to re recreate that rack from memory and put the sideboards on it with styrene. When he first got the truck, it was it was a ladder rack. It didn't have 
uh, any boards or anything on it and he took some sheets of plywood and we uh, he got some clamps and we attached the boards to the rack and he put in a front gate that went down in that could be taken out and then a back gate as well that could be lifted up and taken out so when he wasn't hauling a load of wood he could take those out and still see use the rear view mirror to see out the back of the truck um, what this truck is missing I just realized I knew there was something it looked a little plain is th there's no mirrors on the sides um, because they had what some people would call trailer mirrors the the big mirrors that stick off the side of the truck um, other than that and the sideboards in the grill not being chrome and having those bumpers on the or bumpers I don't know what you call them, the bumperettes on the front um, the tires do seem a little tall to me but also the truck sits a little higher because it's a four-wheel drive high boy and his was not a four-wheel drive his was a two-wheel drive interestingly enough my stepmother's dad had an old blue GMC four-wheel drive and when we went out to cut woods we cut woods cut wood <laughs> we drive out along tree lines and whatnot and he would put chains on the rear tires and that truck would go anywhere that four-wheel drive GMC would go sometime in the mid 80s um, probably around 1981 1982 so yeah 81 oh, 81 82 um, he actually traded it for a 1975 F-250 that was a super cab which it still had two doors but it had the extended cab and it had two jump seats two little seats facing in on each side in the back same color scheme except that the red on that truck was blue right and with the frame being stretched a little bit farther because it was still a full-size bed I actually kept the the rack with the sideboards and transferred it to the to the other truck that he traded it on um, but that truck would get stuck in anything he couldn't you know it would get stuck where this one wouldn't because it was that much longer of a vehicle it had, you know, those two tires in the back had to do that much more work. Uh, but a lot of good memories in both of those trucks. Uh, I don't think I'll ever build. If I can find a 75 with a Super Cab, I might do a uh, tribute to that one as well. That one also had the same hubcaps that this one did. Um, the only difference was uh, the 75, the hubcaps were chrome, and on the 72, although these are silverish to mimic the chrome, they were actually painted white. And after we got the blue truck, then the, the, the plywood ended up wearing out on the sideboards, and we actually had to replace it. And the replacements that we put on, uh, they uh, didn't. Uh, they weren't quite as long so we ended up not putting in the back gate because that's the other thing is like this truck when we loaded it up with wood it would be full all the way to the top from front to back and the 75 that was the super cab you couldn't load that much on it because the back end went down too far because of the extra weight the extra length and the extra weight from the cab it was just too much for the rear suspension I do want to go back in pull the interior out paint the dashboard the correct color paint the seat the correct color um, add the sideboards chrome the grill remove the bumperettes and re-chrome the bumper uh, and we will do that in a follow-up video I want to thank 
the diecast mafia for hosting these builds and it is a transition time and starting next month we do have a, a, the new group and I'm so thankful to you guys for welcoming me into the community and, and making me your friend. The builds will continue on. Next month the Diecast International Builders has the Surf Wagon build. So I'd love for you guys to come build them with us and show us what you can do with our ideas. Thanks for watching guys. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Leave a comment down below. Click that like button and ring the bell for notifications. As always, this is Don the Diecast Pirate, and I will see you next time.